So about an hour ago, before I started doing this video report, I was just finishing up my NBA handicapping. One of the last games on the board was the Lakers game. And I'm like five minutes into handicapping the contest, and then I hear on ESPN that the Lakers fired Mike Brown. Now, the first reaction among us cynics, and I know there's at least a few of you out there, would be, what took you so long? And then believe me, it has nothing to do about the 1-8 and eight preseason or the 1-4 and four start, but you have to go back and ask yourself, what the hell did they hire Mike Brown for in the first place? What did Mike Brown ever do when he was head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers he sat there and went okay tonight's game plan we're gonna give LeBron the ball uh, LeBron you have to score 30 uh, LeBron also you have to get 15 rebounds and guys when any shot is in doubt throw the ball over to LeBron I mean that was really some high-tech coaching there so it was like the Lakers wanted to cut totally totally cut all the ties to anything related to Phil Jackson when they brought in Mike Baum because remember you know the players and most so-called experts thought that Brian Shaw, Lakers assistant, former Laker, blah, 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 would get the job. No, mm -mm, they bring in Mike Brown. So, you know, last year, were the Lakers really that good? No. And there was a number of reasons why. But, of course, this year, they thought, hey, this was going to be the year for the Lakers. They bring in Steve Nash. They bring in Dwight Howard. So what does Mike Brown do? He goes and installs the Princeton offense. Are you serious? I can tell you guys, you know, if I could give this all up today and go back in time, I would love to go back and cover the NBA, more than even boxing. Anything else, I'd love to go back and be an NBA reporter. That, to me, is just the best sport out there as far as baseball, just too damn boring. I can't see myself ever sitting in a press box for three and a half to four hours again in my life. I don't even like going to games. You know, football, eh, it's, I mean, it's good, but I'd rather watch it as a fan than have to work it, you know? College basketball, eh, NBA, loved it, okay? But listen, the key to winning in the NBA is having a system, that works with the players that you have. The Princeton offense? I mean, seriously? You got Steve Nash. What has made Steve Nash the MVP of this league? What has made him a perennial all-star? Because he likes to race down the floor, he loves to run, and he's great at the pick and roll. You're running the Princeton offense? Seriously? Gee, doesn't that mean you need a, a decent high post uh, uh, big guy that can uh, play the high post and is an exceptional passer? Hmm. Paul Gasol and Dwight Howard. Oh, yeah, they're exceptional passers, all right. I, it just makes no sense. So now, of course, you're hearing all the cast of characters that are coming out that are potentially eligible or candidates for this job because I believe they're going to go with uh, long term, long time uh, veteran uh, assistant and former NBA coach Bernie Bickerstaff to coach tonight's game for LA. Uh, and listen, guys, uh, FYI, it really didn't have anything to do with the 0-8 preseason when you think about it. Because, listen, did the Lakers have any chance to do anything but 0-8 in the preseason when Dwight Howard missed the first six games recovering the back surgery and then Kobe missed the last few because of the foot problems? And this Lakers team isn't that great. I mean, other than Jordan Hill and Steve Blake when he's not starting as he is now with Nash out, name me anybody worthy of being on their bench that can be a contributor. Exactly. They've got no bench. But all their chips are down on the table with that starting five. So now you have to look again. It comes back to the system and who's going to play. I mean, is Brian Shaw suddenly going to be given the job? Did they call up Phil and say, hey, Phil, you know, uh, we've got this all-star center and we've got this all-star point guard. Would you like to come back for a year or two maybe and try to win another ring? And Phil's going, yeah, but can I put the triangle offense in? Can I come back and do that? I don't know. You know, but the one thing you've seen about Phil Jackson, he is adaptable. He always changed according to the personnel that he had over the years. Look at what he did in Chicago. Look what he did in uh, L.A. Of course, when you have Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, you don't have to adapt that much. Um, you go to Mike uh, D'Antonio, the former Suns coach, who bombed in New York because he didn't have the right personnel. But, oh, he was kind of successful with Nash running the show. And that's the bottom line. I mean, once they get Steve Nash back and you put in the right system and Nash gets used to his new teammates, gee, Dwight likes the ball down low, about three foot from the basket because that's where his best game comes offensively. You know, Paul Gasol likes to be somewhere a couple feet shy of the top of the key, left or right-hand side. That's where he likes to operate. Kobe, oh, just give him the ball and let him do whatever the hell he wants. A little bit of a problem because you got Kobe who really is a... Point, you know, he has a point guard mentality as well as being a scorer because, really, he's a great distributor of the ball when he's not slashing or taking the shots himself. 
Interesting thing, though, with the Lakers. I mean, uh, five games into the season, boom, your coach is out. Man, are they going to eat a big contract there? Anyway, let's get busy here with Friday. College basketball tipping off. I sell the same thing. I tell you, at the start of every single season, first three weeks of the season, no matter the sport is the time, you always have the advantage over the odds makers because, trust me, look at the college basketball card tonight. Yeah, you've got the big names, Kentucky and Indiana and stuff like that playing, you know, Ohio State, etc., and it's easy to know, oh, Ohio State lost two key scores, their top two scores from a year ago. Kentucky has a whole new roster coming in. It's easy to know those type of things. But then look at the breadth of the uh, college games here, the expanse of, of games on the card tonight. And tell me, what do you know about the Denver Pioneers, uh, the Peacocks of St. Peter's, uh, the Dragons of Drexel? I mean... This is where you're going to find your money in college basketball at the beginning of the season. Now, there's a football game to be played tonight as well. And, uh, you know, last night, majority of the handicappers here at the site had phenomenal nights. Um, one of them happened to be um, Matt Rivers, who cashed in again with a 300,000 star play on Virginia Tech, getting the cover. Should have won the damn game outright against Florida State last night. Uh, tonight, Matt has his highest rated 500,000 star max wager winner number two in a row going on the Pittsburgh, Connecticut side. Now, he just hit a 500,000 star max wager Wednesday night, two nights ago, when he called for Bowling Green, and they won outright in that contest. So he's got another play just as strong going tonight. Uh, kudos going out to uh, Jeff Benton who uh, last night uh, followed up with a 40-dime winner on the Indianapolis Colts after having a 30-dime winner on Bowling Green on Wednesday. Jeff is now going for winning day number 9 out of 10, and $10 betters have won $6,280 the past 41 days. Is that a nice six-week run for Jeff Benton? Uh, Chris Jordan last night made it NFL winner number 8 out of 9 with his 500-star winner number 3 in a row with the Colts in that 27-10 easy win and cover. And tonight he has his uh, opening college basketball 400-star uh, underdog of the year release where he's backing this puppy in revenge plus an NBA selection as well. Anthony Red took a split last night, but he hit the big bet. 50 dimer on Virginia Tech, lost a smaller play, 25 dimes on Jacksonville. So he picked up 22 dimes overall. Today he goes not only for football winner number 17 out of 26, but 50 dime winner number two in a row on Pittsburgh and Connecticut. So a lot of the handicappers had very, very strong nights last night. I had my biggest play of the season going last night. Uh, that was a 30 dime play. 2012 game of the year. It was Arkansas State taking care of business with a second and a half surge, getting the easy cover as a seven to seven and a half point home chalk against UL Monroe. Um, again, you know, as I told you, it's an obscure game, but I've always found the value and concentrating the most where the odds makers concentrate the least. Listen, I'm going to get to your free pick, and it's going to be in college basketball here in just a second, but I also have the $5 play of the week promotion going today, and it's going to be me. Uh, I'm going for winning day number six out of seven. And it's a five-dime play in college basketball. It's a rather obscure game on the card. Uh, it goes early in the evening. If you still see the play on my site, you know it's still available and it hasn't started yet. Uh, it would cost you $55 if you bought it regularly. I'll give it to you for 5 bucks. Again, it's the $5 play of the week selection. Um, and the coupon code to get that play, it's... 50 college, 50 C O L L E G E, 50 college. Again, it's $55. You put it in your shopping cart. Then you go and use the coupon code 50 college, 50 college, no space between 50 or college. That'll take $50 off, leaving you with a purchase price of $5. And I think it's the best bet tonight in the college basketball card. And FYI, just because I told you, you know, the first three weeks, the easiest time to make money in any sport at the beginning of the season, doesn't mean you come out and go crazy. I mean, listen, this game deserves to be a five-dime play. It's not going to be a 30-dime play. It's not going to be a 15-dime play, which is usually my max wager release. But it's a good, solid play. And I think this obscure contest is the best game on tonight's card. Um, so again, it's the $5 play of the week promotion and you've got all the scoop for there. Uh, let me get to a free pick for you. Georgia Tech tonight is opening its remodeled home court stadium. Uh, it's Coliseum. Uh, they've now renamed it to the McCamish Pavilion. I think when I lived in Atlanta, it used to be called... Uh, Alex Alexander Center or something? I don't know. I only went to a few games there at Georgia Tech when I lived in Atlanta for nine years. Um, but anyway, listen, uh, Georgia Tech um, is going to be a better team this year. Brian Gregory, um, you know, has really done a good job in terms of recruiting. Um, he's expecting 
Um, this first recruiting class of his uh, that is highly touted to have three of those starters make instant contributions. He's taking on a Tulane squad that went 15 and 16 last year. Uh, the Green Wave started the season 8 and 0 uh, with the eighth win to start last season coming at home 57-52 against Georgia Tech. Now the Green Wave are no pushovers, okay? And if I was getting seven points tonight, I would probably lean toward Green uh, the Green Wave in this particular contest. They have some size, uh, they have talent, they have uh, three returning starters as well. But I do like Georgia Tech in this spot, being their return to their home campus, because last year they split their games playing at the Phillips Arena, Arena in downtown Atlanta, and then uh, I think uh, in a suburban location, Gwinnett County, I believe it was. So I'll go with Georgia Tech here. A lot of pomp, a lot of circumstances. Go Yellow Jackets. I'll lay the five points with them. The other play um, for your free selection tonight. North Texas is a 10-point underdog against Creighton. So you have a team that's one of the best in the Sun Belt Conference taking on a team that many feel will win the Missouri Valley Conference. You've got two exceptional scorers for their respective teams. For Creighton, it's the head coach's son, Doug McDermott. Uh, the Blue Jays like to play a fast, up-tempo style. I mean, they're not happy if they're not scoring in the 80s, okay? North Texas, a little more deliberate, but they've got Tony Mitchell. Tony Mitchell is a guy who averaged 15 points a game last year. He can go off as well. Um, plays more in a team structure, so you're not going to see him averaging 22 points a game, most likely. But he is surrounded by four very good starters on the floor as well. And I'm looking at this line, and I'm thinking, you know, this is a game between two pretty evenly matched teams. And although the Blue Jays are playing at home, let's face it, this is the season opener. You've got two veteran-oriented teams, both with exceptional top scores. I've got to grab the points with the mean green in this one. Uh, one, because I think it's going to be a six, seven point game. And two, because I just think any team with the nickname Mean Green, you know, you got to back a team with that. So anyway, North Texas would be the other free selection of the two. I have to be honest with you. I do like Georgia Tech a little bit more. Uh, looked at the NBA card tonight. The game that I had originally focused on and I thought about making as my top bet tonight is one that I want to just give you a little word of warning. I'm looking at Memphis tonight and the Grizzlies after opening up the season with a loss to the Clippers have just hammered their last three of Opponents. And tonight, Memphis is a seven-point favorite at home against Houston. Now, as we've seen with the Rockets, James Harden came out firing like crazy, and they won their first two games against the Pistons and the Hawks at home, or on the road. Then they come back home, and they lose by 10 points to Portland, laying five and a half. Then they lose to Denver by uh, six points, laying two and a half points, because Harden struggled from the field. And that's what you're going to get with the Houston Rockets, because you know, they've got a lot of guys that play forward. They've got Harden, who's exceptional. They've got Jeremy Lin, but it's going to take them a while to find a secondary and a third score behind Harden. Um, they're just not that talented, and they don't have a lot of size either. But the problem with going with the Memphis Grizzlies tonight is you have to look at the Memphis Grizzlies schedule. Yes, tonight they are at home. They are playing the Houston Rockets. They should be favored. But just keep in mind, on Sunday, the defending champion Miami Heat come to town. I don't care how much money or how little money you make. As an NBA athlete, you're no different than what happens to every college athlete. You get caught in look-ahead situations. You've got Harden and the Rockets coming to town tonight, and you've got the defending world champions coming to town with LeBron on Sunday. Where do you think your attention focus is going to be focused? So I think instead the Rockets would probably be the play, not an official free play, just a word of warning when I'm handicapping the card. I wanted to pass that on to you. So that'll do it, guys. $5 play of the week is me. Again, you have the coupon code, which is uh, 50college, 50college. Good luck to you all, and I'll catch you again early on Saturday morning when um, we resume with uh, two or three college football free selections. I think three, three free picks. Try to say that three times quickly. I'll have for you along with uh, who's hot and who's not. Good luck, guys.